Hi, and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do negative angles. Now there are many ways where people will tell you if you do negative angles, the sin becomes a negative and the cos becomes a positive and, and the tan becomes a negative. Now to memorize that is all fair and well. So sin negative theta becomes negative sin theta. Cos negative theta becomes positive cos theta. And tan negative theta becomes negative tan theta. But in an exam, while you're stressed out and you can't really function, the best thing to remember is to simply add 360. So if I give you sin negative 45 degrees, simply add a 360 degrees. So what do I have? I have sin 360 minus 45. Do a reduction. It's in the fourth quadrant, so it's negative. Because I'm using 360, the ratio stays the same, 45. Now yes, it was easier to simply say, using these rules on top, that I could simply say, okay, so if it's a negative angle, as it is here, it simply becomes negative sin theta. I could have simply went on top, said, okay, a sin negative theta is negative sin 45, without doing the work of adding a 360. But what happens is later pupils become confused. They end up with so many rules and so many uh, methods to memorize that they can't remember all these rules. But at 360 is simply adding a revolution, which is something you learn when you're in like grade seven, when they do a total revolution is 360 degrees. It is much easier to remember simply add a 360. Let's do a reduction of cos negative 30. Now, if I simply add my 360, I'm gonna have cos 360 minus 30. Doing a reduction, it's in the fourth quadrant, so it's positive cos 30. Let's see how come the adding 360 becomes easier. What if I gave you the value cos negative 225. Now immediately you're going to look at this and you're going to say okay this becomes cos 225 and then you do reduction which is 180 plus 45 which then gives me minus cos 45. That's all fine. The problem is almost 90% of the chance pupils write here negative cos 225. Common mistake repeatedly made. Now let's just add a 360. So I've got cos 360 minus 225 which gives me cos of 135. We know it's in the second quadrant If I reduce, I will get negative cos 45 degrees. So both methods, you would get the same answer. But I am emphasizing that many times pupils make this mistake. Right, another case where we would use the negative angle, where we would simply add a 360. When the ratios are written upside down, Theta minus 180 is not how we normally know it. In our reduction, we know it as 180 minus theta. So we simply add 360 to this equation. And what would that give us? Sin minus 180 plus 360 gives me 180. And then my angle is positive, so it's plus theta. Reduce gives me negative sin theta. Now, if you were trying to use the above rules, you would have taken out a negative. You would have swapped it. 
and then you would have done reduction of sin 180 minus theta. The negative is there from your original that you have memorized and you would still end up with negative sin theta. Again, I am emphasizing that these are points where children are careless. Whereas in I say negative 180 plus 360, pupils know okay, that is 180 degrees plus theta. Um, another point where they would give you is if they gave you an angle that exceeds 360. So if I gave you sin 585. Now when the angle exceeds 360, all you do is subtract 360. So if I say sin 585 We have had sin 225 and from there we have our standard reduction. I know it's in the third quadrant. So it's sin 180 plus 45 that becomes negative sin 45 degrees. You will notice in this entire page whenever I chose to do a reduction I chose 360 or 180 not 90 and 270. You only use 90 and 270 when there's a specific question that cannot be reduced with 180 or 360. So basically, when you're stuck and you can't go further. Thank you for watching.